let's find out how the magician and his assistant can actually do the trick. So just as a reminder, the magic trick uh, has the audience picking four cards at random from a five card, from a 52 card deck. The assistant chooses four of them to reveal in order. The magician, based on the four cards that he sees, predicts what the fifth card is. How are they gonna do this? Well, the first observation is an application of the pigeonhole principle that we've already seen. Among the five cards chosen by the audience, there have to be at least two have the same suit. Might be all they have the same suit. There might be two different pairs of cards with the same suit, in which case the um, uh, assistant can reveal any one of them. But the idea is that the assistant, assistant is going to choose one of the two cards with the same suit to hide and is going to put first in the list of the four cards that he reveals the other card with that suit, which means that the magician, merely by looking at the first card in the list, immediately knows the suit of the hidden card. That's step one. Now, the magician's uh, problem at this point, knowing the suit of the hidden card, is to figure out um, which of the remaining 12 cards of that suit uh, the, hidden, the hidden card could be. All he knows is the suit doesn't know, uh, and he knows the, what, what the revealed card was. So if it's a jack of clubs, he knows it. it's a club but not a jack. That leaves 12 other clubs that the magician has to uh, distinguish among. How does he figure out which one it is? Well, um, he can look at the order in which the assistant reveals the remaining three cards. Uh, so we can think of all of the cards is numbered from 1 to 52. Here's a simple way to do it. Number the first four aces, 1, 2, 3, 4, using the standard bridge order of suits, where club is less than diamonds, less than hearts, less than spades. Uh, the way you do this really doesn't matter as long as it's very easy to remember for both the magician and the assistant. So we, at this point, we can think of the cards as numbered from 1 to 52. Um, and when we do that, the three cards that, uh, that the assistant can put in the list of four uh, uh, after they've chosen the first card to list can be ranked as small, medium, and large, depending on where they stand in this ordering of cards. The smallest number, the medium-sized number, and the largest number. And of course, there'll be six possible orderings of small, medium, and large, three times two times one. So here are the six possible orders, which means that the assistant can communicate a number from one to six to the magician. The problem is that there's only six sequences and there, we've figured out that there are 12 possible hidden cards of the known suit. How on earth does the assistant communicate the extra missing bit to the magician? It's still, the magician is still missing one bit. Well, uh, we said that the assistant has to choose one of the two cards with the same suit to reveal and hide the other one, but the assistant has a choice of which of those two cards it's going to be. And that's where uh, the assistant gets the ability to communicate an extra bit to the magician. How is that going to work? Well, if you think about any two cards of the same suit, uh, they're, they're ranked from uh, 1 to 13, ace to 3, um, four down to king. And we can think of these uh, 13 ranks as being uh, ordered around a clock, okay? Now, there are um, 13 points here in the, in the circle. That means that if I go in a clockwise direction, um, at the distance from one to the other uh, has to be at most six between one pair going around from one to the other. So for example, if I go from eight to two, it's seven. That means that when I go from two to six, it's 13 minus seven or six. So if you pick any two cards of the same suit, say that the, this was a deuce of clubs and an eight of clubs, and the assistant's problem is which one to reveal, the assistant will choose the one that is the beginning of the shortest distance between the two. So the assistant would choose the two because they're from the two, there is only a distance six to the eight. And that means, of course, that the uh, assistant simply tells the magician how many steps past the two to go, um, a number from uh, one to six. So we're going to hide the card with the smaller offset. 
and reveal the other card. Let's do an example. So the first card, to summarize, the first card determines the hidden suit. Um, the hidden rank is going to be gotten by looking at the rank of the first card and adding to it an offset number that's between 1 and 6. And the offset number is going to be given by choosing the order of the remaining three cards as small, medium, large, through large, medium, small. And we can assign these numbers again in some nice arbitrary but easily memorable way. All right, let's do an example. Suppose that the hand was chosen by the audience was this one with a jack of clubs, a ten of clubs, jack of diamonds, nine of hearts, three of diamonds. And in this case, there's only one uh, pair of cards with the same suit, namely the jack of clubs and the ten of clubs. Okay, so the assistant is going to reveal one of those two. How does he figure out which one? Well, you look at the clockwise distance from 10 to jack, which is 1, and the clockwise distance from jack to 10, which is 12, and you decide, OK, I'm going to reveal 10 and communicate to the magician the number 1. So I'm going to reveal the 10 of clubs, and then I'm, of course, hiding the other one, the jack of clubs, and I'm going to communicate an offset of 1 by revealing the remaining three cards other than the 10 that I've revealed in the order small, medium, and large. Three is less than nine, less than jack, which is an indication of uh, the number one by this code. And that's the way the trick works. Now, just to make a remark that if you tried to do the trick where you chose a four card hand and the assistant revealed three, this one is not going to work because there's an immediate top level bottleneck. Namely, if the audience picks 52, can pick any one of uh, 52, choose four four card hands, there's about a quarter of a million of them, um, the number of possible three card sequences from the four card hand is only 132,000. And that means, by the generalized pigeonhole principle, that at least three of those hands have to be mapped to the same list of three cards from the hand um, by uh, generalized pigeonhole, which means that uh, there's no possible matching that will enable the magician to reconstruct what the, what the missing card is from what the assistant reveals. In fact, there, the magician is going to be left with an uncertainty. He'll be able to pin it down to three cards, uh, but not know any better which. By the way, this is uh, one particular way of doing the magic trick with the five card hand and revealing four that's easy enough for a magician and an assistant to master with about a half an hour's worth of practice. And we've done this as a class demo many times. Um, it's interesting that um, the degree constrained logic that said that there was a matching actually implies that you can do the trick with a much larger deck than 52 cards. Uh, as a matter of fact, you can do the trick with a deck of 124 cards and you wind up with a graph that is still degree constrained and therefore has a matching. And the question is, is there a memorable matching when Um, and some just ingenuity that allows uh, a magician and assistant to perform the trick um, in their heads in real time before an audience.